Welcome back to the craft room. I've got a different video for you today and this one has taken quite a while to get done. This is the first one I've done with a voiceover so please bear with me. Also I've been wanting to get back into making art dolls so after watching a few different techniques online with places like Enchantarium and Catmeleon um, I settled on KP Creations style of doll and I've made my doll which is somewhere around and I'll get in a minute but I've made mine in the way that um, the YouTube channel KP Creations has done it I have veered a little bit but it's pretty close to the way she does it so I'll put a link in the description to her her channel so you can see the right way to do it but I made this little guy as like a test piece to refresh my memory on how to do the dolls and he's made with just stuff I had in the craft room except for the fur because I started with one fur and then end up with a different fur but you get that um he's called Ralph and I will find him to to get him come here All right here he is this is Ralph get him facing the right way and he is an art doll kitten he is posable so he can stand up no it doesn't hurt him and he's got two beans he's been he's been sitting on the floor for his photos so his legs are a bit different he's fully poseable he's got a wire skeleton and anyway you'll see all that in the video and I hope it's informative enough that you might want to make your own I thoroughly recommend looking at KP and the other creators dolls but I hope you like watching how I made mine to begin the cat I had this um, head that I had created with Fimo clay earlier. These are all with scraps that I'd had left over from other projects. That's why it has green lips and a purple back of the head. I left a hole in the back to connect the, connect the skeleton to and I used ca glass cachapons for the eyes because I didn't ha have any at that point in time. I also made the feet hoping that they would work out the right size. Um, I left holes as you can see in the top for the leg wires to go into they're not terribly well blended to each other but that won't matter because you're not going to see them the fur will cover that up I also put the nails in um, and yeah that I think they turned out well and they seem to match each other well in size so all of these have been sculpted and cooked in the oven so that they're all ready to go now I need to get a size so that I know how big my skeleton is going to be how much how much I have to cut the wire so what am I going to measure aha we got a random cat off the road out of the dustbin and fed her a bit so she was nice and sleepy just kidding this is Holly this is our pud and hopefully she will sit still long enough for me to measure her which doesn't look promising she's looking for the food and she's off and she's back that, yes you're being patted stay still quick quick measure her while she's still quick 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 fast 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 and she's gone but we got the measurements so these are averages for our cat uh, so now I need to measure on the head of a cat that I've made get the measurement here the same measurement I took off my fuzzy butt friend and see what the difference is all right so I need to work out the difference between the two and it is about four centimeters and then I've gone ahead and converted the rest of the measurements minus the four this is the wire I'm using this is aluminium wire I've got two thicknesses of this this is the heavier thickness for the actual bones themselves and what I'm doing here I'm going to add the spine to the tail so it's in one piece these are all just approximates that's why the ish word is there we um, once we get into it we can cut pieces off yep 
Oh, that's right. Um, with the legs, we're going to be doing them over the top. So you need to times the measurement by two. So they're 30 centimetres on top, so it gives you two 16, 15, 16 centimetre legs. So that's the wire that I've already cut. First of all, we make sure the wire will fit in the holes. And it will. Not very far, but just enough to get us started. Yep. Checking the hat, cat hole. Now, I did leave a bigger hole in the back of the cat's head because I wanted to bend it over. Ignore the bit missing off my pliers, they still work. So we bend over the end to make, give us a wider point into the back of the um, back of the head so that the glue has more to attach to. Look at me being strong, I can do this. And you double check it'll still fit, yes. And I left quite a decent hole inside the head. I had actually put um, aluminium in the middle of the head so that it would compact away from where the wire was, give us a bit of space. Make the wire as straight as I possibly can. Use our measurements yet again. Ah, uh, yeah, in the neck, if I took away the four centimeters, there was no centimeters. So her shoulders were going to attach to the back of her ears. So I'm going to give it a bit of leeway, but not a lot. Just so that there has a little bit of a neck. Pretty sure cats have a neck. Even kittens. So this is the thinner wire. So this wire I'm going to use to attach the skeletal pieces together. If that makes sense. Now, we've got the legs. Bend them in half. That'll give us our shoulders. Make sure they're the same. Just bending them over, not making a harsh kink. And also making them the same. Check once again that the feet fit, yes. I seem to do that a lot. I don't believe myself, but maybe I'm checking a different foot each time, not sure. So we mark where approximately we think the first set of legs should be. And then just hang that over the wire. Get the smaller wire started. Just a little bit started. Just so that you're tying to something. This is, like I said, this is aluminium wire. This is not steel wire, so it's a little bit easier to bend. And as you can see, I'm not getting it terribly tight, but that is all right because we have a, a different way to get the tightness in there. This is just giving us a, oh, like a temporary securing place. Yep, round and round and back and round. Apparently with wire work, now feel free to write in the comments if I'm wrong, but if you do it, twist it more than three times, it makes a knot because it's enough of the resistance in the wire itself to hold it. So that, that joint is now done. I'm just using the pliers to try and scrunch it in a bit tighter. Yep, tighten it up so it's got less movement within the joint. There's a pair of legs attached. So that's one done. Now I'm just guesstimating. I mean, I have my measurements there, but you know, we wrote them down, did the right thing, and then didn't look at them again. And that is, all right, we've jumped ahead now. We've done the same thing with the second set of, are there shoulders at the back? They're not, are they? It's the pelvis. I think it's the pelvis. Anyway, we're doing the same thing so that legs are hinged over. It gives us a bit of a shoulder. And look, they're all the same size. It stands up. Way we did the right thing. Scrunching it down with the pliers that are missing half of themselves. <laughs> May have to invest a new set of pliers. Now, as you can see there, the head is terribly long. Well, the neck. The neck that I was leaving in a little bit is terribly long. So we are going to guess where we want it. Probably about there. 
as I said at the intro, I'm doing a lot of this as I go. I was for watching a lot of other people that make it and I've developed what I'm doing off watching some of them and I will put links to theirs in the description but this is me figuring it out as I go. Generally know what I'm doing, I think, maybe. So we've just readjusted the neck at edge and made sure it's bent over enough to fit in the hole. Now we're doing the... I don't know if you've seen on a cat, but the bottom leg, uh, the bottom knee comes forward. So we're trying to get it to be stable with that bend in the bottom of the legs because we need to be able to attach the feet to that. That's it. Just sit them in there just to see whether it's going to be right. Looks right. Straighten out the tail a little bit. Might as well, no, we're going to put the head on? No, we're not going to put the head on. Right, now this stuff here, I don't have any epoxy sculpt at the moment. This this kitten is just a trial with the stuff I had at home, just to get back into being able to make them. So this stuff is epoxy putty, which you can get from hardware stores. This one's aquatic putty, but you can get all different kinds. I've got a, a metal one as well. This was just to go onto the wire so it's actually the right stuff to use this is what's going to hold our hinges my well hinges our legs to our spine so I've got gloves on because the actual mixing is a little bit toxic and it's a pain in the bum to do it with gloves but at least it's not going into my skin so you got to knead it up until it's all one color because um, I think the outside's one chemical and the inside's another chemical and they work together and then go hard so once it's all one colour, we're going to break it in half and then push it into where the thinner wire is wrapped around the thicker wire. What this will do, this will set rock hard. So I'm going to push it right into where the wires cross over, push it in, squish it in, and then that will set our, that one will be the pelvis and the other one will be the shoulders. And it'll give us a fixed point to where the legs attach to the spine. Just to set us up and keep us straight. So we're going to let, once that's on enough, we'll take the gloves off and we'll let it set. Yeah, prop it up right and then let it set so that the, um, Putty can dry, and then we'll go on to the next step. Just checking underneath to make sure the putty's gone all the way through. Push it in. I think you've got about... 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, somewhere around there before it's hard. Right, so this is the next day and all the, the putty, epoxy putty, has, has dried and our little skeleton. And I've also trimmed off some of the excess stuff we didn't need. So now we need to attach our femo pieces, our clay pieces. It does look a bit weird like that. It looks like a stick figure of a cat, but we'll get there. The trusty hot glue gun. I have since got a better glue gun, but this one will do for now. <laughs> First of all, we're putting the feet on. Now, with hot glue, there are two drying parts. When you put the glue on first, it's liquid, and you got to push it into what you want fairly quickly. Now, th then it will feel dry in about two, three minutes. But if you can leave it longer, it actually dries a little bit harder, a bit longer. Um, I'd say there's like a, a repositionable hot glue or easily removed hot glue and then there's the harder hot glue. So with these, I've put everything, I'll put everything on and then I'll leave it and they'll be just a little bit firmer. So there's all our feet on with the toes facing the right way. And I did try and make so that the I knew which ones were the back and the front by not putting any yellow in them so I knew right that one matches that one 
Yes, they might be different front and back, but at least the pairs are the same. Here's me putting extra hot glue on, just, just to be sure. Making everything sitting flat, making sure the wire's all the way in, and that he's standing fairly stable. As you notice, it's already a he cat. It's funny, you make something like that, it immediately gets whether it's a boy or a girl, or, or an it, or whatever it is. Now the head. As our hold is quite large, we are filling up the hole with hot glue. Absolutely filling it up. And what that'll do, it'll seep into the um, aluminium in the head, but also run down a bit over the folded up aluminium wire. So we'll just hold that in place for a little bit, just so the first setting goes. That should be nearly long enough. Yep. Then the next problem happened is that the head was too heavy for the rest of the body. Every time I let him go, he did a nose dive. So we put weights on the back while the second, while we waited for the second lot of the hot glue to dry. You see how the legs still swing? They do, but they won't come off. We just need to get the rest of it on. So now, if you notice as he comes into view now, he has a bit of a lump at the back of his pelvis. <laughs> we figured out how to do fix that. This is what was happening. So what we did is we got some bolts from the shed, slid them up his tail, put a bit of wire around it and put more putty over it. And now he stands freely on his own and doesn't face plant into the table. Next, we're wrapping wadding around the skeleton. Now wadding is just quilt batting. You, you can buy it in nearly any craft store. And you, you can either buy it on the roll or you can buy it in packs, which is, I think it's about two metres by however wide they sell it. And all I did is to cut it into strips. And I freely admit I got this idea off KP Creations, whose link will be in the description. It was much easier than the way we used to do it. So f kudos to her to figuring that one out. She's much better at it than me. I'm just wandering around, wrapping, wrapping. I'm trying to spread the wrapping to recreate the muscular fat. Yes, you've got to smack that cat in the butt, make sure it's paying attention. And what's good with batting is that it has like little bits not like Velcro. So if you stretch it slightly, it will stick to itself and stay there. So you have that staying there. So I don't need to glue any of it. I don't need to um, sew it. It sticks to itself and stays in place. Now I padded out the chest a little and I padded across the shoulders a bit more and a bit in the bum. Now this is my original fur I was going to use. I was going to be making a Siamese cat. So the next step was to have the fur nearby and to paint over the brightly colored Fimo scraps in a color that would be all right in the background. So this, these colors here were to match that fur to make a Siamese cat. Spoiler, I changed my mind, but anyway, this is what this part of the um, process is. So this is me just mixing up random paints I had, trying to make a color that would look all right as a background. That's my patented tip of using the end of the paintbrush as a stirrer. So we've got Two, two types of dark brown, we've got a bit of a pearl white and we've got a gold. And so we just wet the brush and put some on and see how it looks. <coughs> so we're just going to cover every bit of Fimo with this dark brown. I'm trying to be do it so you can see. I'm even doing the paw pads just to give an even coating, just something to start with. And now we're covering all the bright yellow. So now we're back again, everything's covered. Now we're doing a little bit lighter in the ears because we are going to see the inside of the ears. So we need to get that color a bit better. I put the, the pearl white inside because it's it's got a better coverage. Now, this is my second choice of fur, and I'm going to go with this one, mainly because with the other one, if I trim the fur, it is a bit longer. Here's me just checking that the 
undercoat will work with what I've already done. That that brown on that fur is only on the ends. So if I trim it, it's going to be a, a custard cat, which is not terrible, but anyway. For this cat, we're going to go with a nice smoky grey. First of all, you've got to find out which direction your fur is going in and write it on the other side. Put an arrow to show which way the fur is going in. Believe me, you don't want any part of your animal or whatever with the fur going the wrong way. <laughs> it looks terrible. Well, then again, you might want it to look scruffy. But anyway, that there is your selvage. You don't want to use that because what it is is the warp is totally messed up on the edges. You want to use away from that. Now, this is me trying to figure out how to make a pattern piece for this cat. I am just basically guessing... I'm going to get where the neck is. I'm going to give myself a little bit for the back of the neck. I know I'm going to lose it, but at least I'll put it there to begin with. Length of the tail. Flatten him out a little bit so that we can lay him on his back. So this bit we're cutting, well, this bit we're marking to cut is for from the back of the neck all the way down to the end of the tail. But it also has to run underneath the belly. So we just roll him on his side and mark where the bottom is. This is marking the tail. We can't really see my hands in the way. All right, so that's just giving us a generous bit for the tail to wrap around. And then we draw a line to make a like a rectangular type thing. That's not terribly straight. I should draw that one again. Right, so there's our lines. That's our basic shape. And also put your arrow in because you're going to be cutting your other arrow off. Now, now's the part where I figure out which of my pen knives actually work. And not that one. The reason why I'm cutting from the back is that the only place that the fur is attached is on the back. So if you're cutting the back, you're not actually cutting the fluffy part of the fur. Therefore, you won't have fluff going everywhere. If you use scissors, you're also cutting fur. I just want to cut the back where it's attached. I learned that from making teddy bears. And if anyone has any allergies, have a um, vacuum cleaner going and have it maybe just off to the side. You probably wouldn't see it on here. Now see here, I'm just spreading it apart because I've only cut the back. And as you can see, there is no fur floating around it in the background. So we're just cutting there. A little bit harder to cut through the selvage, but it's doable. Always cut away from yourself. Don't cut to yourself. Otherwise, you will cut yourself. Nearly through. Go. So that's now cut out, nice little bits. And look, no fur all over the table, yay! So there's our piece. It's got a little bit extra because we're not going to use the selvage, we'll just take that off. Alright. So I just trim this bit off. This selvage, if you see those little holes there, that's where it attached to the drum and where they pushed the fur fibres through the backing piece. So that actually is held quite tightly. And that's why all the um, stretch is a bit dead on there because it's been overstretched in the drums. All right, so that's our piece to make the back of the cat. We lay him back on. Center him a bit and now we've got to work out where his legs are going to be coming out from So get our pen Really should have put my pen my knife away shouldn't I? <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm just marking using the tip of my finger where the uh, leg is coming away from the body. Just 
keep rolling in backwards and forwards. That's showing the back of the leg. Now we're going to straighten out these back legs. And mark that. And mark that. Spin them up again. Roll them down. There is a bit of stretch in this fur fabric. It's not uh, not a woven back, it's a knit back. So it does have a bit of stretch. Now, see the lines? Between those lines is where the legs come away from the body. So that's where we cut our leg holes. Get the fur off the end. Alright, here's our knife. Now I try to make these holes as tight as possible. You can always trim them out a little bit, but you don't want to start off with them too big. So put him in. Now we'll pop his little feet through. If we can. Oh, time to cut some more. There we go. That's through. And then the back one. Now you've got to remember at the moment those feet are only attached with the wire in the middle of the bottom. So we're being a little bit careful with them, otherwise we have to get the hot glue gun out again. So pull up his vest, making sure that the wadding is staying in place. All right. And the fur's going the right direction, yes. Now, we need to squish him down a bit. You've got to remember this wadding is quite soft, so it will compact down a little bit to get his legs in. Oh no, we broke his leg. No, we didn't. Why, well, remember. <laughs> and then while that's down, so you're not bending it twice, we'll do the same with the back leg. Making sure not to knock off any toes. I think I actually do knock off one toe, one little toenail, but it's easy to glue them back in. So pull, pull them down. Luckily he's got bendy legs, hey. Straighten the legs out. Now remember these are wire, so you can't continuously bend them. They will bend a bit, but you know, do it too much, it will break. And then the fur does match up on his belly. And then around now is when I realise that the neck is still a little bit long, but at the moment I can't do anything about it because the head's attached. And there is the nice back edge. So that's going to run all the way from the back base of the head all the way down the tail. Make sure we pull it right up. Just double checking that it's going to meet and meet firmly. We don't. We want it tight, but we don't want it over tight. Done. So this is the thread I use. This is upholstery thread. Um, you should be able to get it through craft stores. Uh, I'm not sure what you call it. I think they come in different degrees. Now this is me trying to find a good needle. <laughs> There's a lot in there. That's a good one. Enough to grip and a point. So we just thread the needle. Now, so you don't get knots in your thread, if you thread your needle before you cut it off the spool, it won't twist back on itself. Just a little tip for you. So we're going to use the thread doubled. And we're going to make a donkey knot in the end. Hold them together, wrap it around, and roll it off your finger. And there we have a donkey knot at the end of our doubled up thread. All right, now this is me trying to figure out where to start sewing. Do I want, no, I don't think I want to sew there. What we want to do is take off the corners so that it will 
um, slope up to his head from the chest. Just the very corner pieces off. Oh, look at that big hand in the way. Do a close up of my wrist. Right, so now that is about the same um, density or thickness or tightness as the body is, so it will match in better. So now we are doing glove stitch, which is hide your knot first on the inside. And then we're going to be crisscrossing over the edges. Now, because this is a knitted back fur with acrylics, I can do this and it's not going to fray, which is great. We like things like this. Woven won't, f well, woven won't fray as long as you're far enough back. If you're close to the edge on woven furs, yes, it will fly fray. And we just crisscross from inside to outside both ways all the way up and don't hook the ears because they're quite thin and they may come off take your time do it slow so we do this all the way up inside to outside this is me still trying to decide which way to have the cat I have the rest of the body that way. Can I do the top and the bottom? Yep. Alright, so this is how do you tie the first knot. So you just take a little stitch. And while there's still thread knot pull through, come in through the back of that loop and it will make it a surface knot on your fabric. Just to secure it. Now use the end of the needle just to fluff the fur out of your stitching. And there's our little knot, and that's how much we've done. That little V under the neck, that'll be fine once we get the rest of the fur on. You want to put little knots here, here and there, just, just in case something gets caught, the whole lot's not going to come undone. So now we've actually run out of thread, so we're doing our little knot here with a much smaller loop. And then hide the end inside the body. Oh, I'm doing a second knot. Okay. Extra careful. And hide the end inside the body. Body make good pin cushions if you need them. At least you know where the needle is. Donkey knot again. Nice little one right at the end. And then we carry on sewing up the back. Or the belly, not the back. Uh, I use a glove stitch here because it lays flat. If I used a mattress stitch here, even oh that yes, I actually put little scraps underneath his ears because they kept moving around and scratching, and I thought no, that's not good. So he's got a he's got a pillow now. <laughs> but as I was saying, if I use mattress stitch on the body, it will leave you a ridge, whereas glove stitch leaves you quite flat. So that's just on the pelvic area. And if you get your stitches small enough, you can't actually see your steam. So now we just do the little bit of tail. Take off the points so that it will round. Or oh, points, corners, corners, I think the corners. We just want it to round to the nice shape. It could have been a shade longer, but I think it's alright for a kitten. Okay, 
So there's just the little bits we took off and now we just use the glove stitch all the way down to the end. And this is the end. So we're at the end. We just want to do one little stitch to close that little tiny hole. Back through your loop. Pull up. And there goes the hole. And we're going to do two just to be sure, pretty sure. And then push it back in. And that's how you hide your end as well. Now I will come along later with a little grey texture and just dot that dot. But that is the body skinning done. Alrighty. There you go. He's got a, he's got a fur vest on. And from now on, it's very hard not to pat the cat. This is make sure that's up high enough. Yes. And on to the legs. So we've got our fur back. We've marked which which direction the fur's going in. Now we lay the cat on. And you want to be ma marking from where that leg hole is. So try and lay that on it exactly. And mark a generous amount. Don't, don't be stingy because you can always cut it off a bit once you get to that area. So I'm guesstimating what halfway across the leg would be. We're really just making a big, is it a square or a rectangle? I think it would be a rectangle. And that will be our general shape for our legs. Our front legs, that is. We need two of those and it goes that way. Yes, mark on your pieces which way they gotta go to. So I'm gonna use my pen knife as a ruler. Mark on the pen knife and then mark there. I could have got up and got a ruler. I do have them. I was just being lazy. Once again, not using the selvage because we want our um, stretch to be correct and selvage does give you a different, so different um, stretch. FL, front leg, just in case I drop them on the floor and put them in the wrong place. And then we will mark out for the back legs as well while we're here. Once again, from the top of the leg hole, lay him out, straighten it out a little bit and mark it. Now the lines for the back legs won't be as straight up and down as the front legs. They are actually on more of an angle so you do want them more of a, a, a cup shape, a stand up cup. And that is the shape for the back legs. Of course you need two of them. It's going that way and BL means back leg. And here we are with all our pieces all cut out. Front legs and back legs, two of each. Away we go. Get Mr. Giddy Cat. And this is the front leg. And yes, it matches. See, I don't want the legs too skinny, so I don't mind them being a, a bit extra of fur in the leg. Because that will actually give me enough to attach the feet to the legs. So I have sewed up the inside of the leg with glove stitch, but now I am pinning the top of the leg to the, to the bottom of the leg hole. Just so that as I sew, I don't twist it around and then it won't match up and it'll be not very good. Just put the pins in to hold it in place. I promise you won't feel it. Just check around and make sure your edges match up. 
with the legs I like to do the more difficult ones first that's why um, it would be easier to do the front one which one of them is done already but I was showing on the back leg how to do it it's just you do it while you're fresher do the harder stuff first and then it's easier as you get tighter and that's the leg there see I'm showing you it's been done with glove stitch but we're going to do mattress stitch on joining the leg to the body I'm just going to take off those little corner pieces because it's a rounded bit where the fur is already on the body so we need to match it okay just pulling all the extra fur out pushing all the stuffing in and away we go so we're still attached we've tied a knot at the end of where we've done the glove stitch and but it's still attached so we take a small piece from that side and then a small piece from the one we're attaching and that is mattress stitch try and make all your stitches the same size keep your pins in so you're not going to be twisting around with two bigger stitches make sure it's not hooked up in the tail or the foot or around the toes or around the ears or around your own hand and just keep moving the fur out of the way little stitches and we are all the way back around and we're just going to be putting the last stitch in and then a knot I think I'm trying to remember what I did yes I did how about that for a guess <laughs> right so this is a slicker brush you can get them at any pet store or um, two dollar shore or whatever you want to call it and that's what I use just to pull the fur out of the stitching and if you do it right you can't even see where you're stitching and just brush over it every now and then because if you leave the fur in the stitches it will get a kink and it will be a visible kink of course we've got to pat the cat and that whole side of legs is all done lovely 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 okay and as you can see you can't see where they were joined up oh right we've jumped ahead all the legs are attached <laughs> I'm quicker than I thought I was so now you can see where the uh, the trouser legs of the fur have come down to the feet so what we have to do now is we need to attach them to the feet and we're going to do that with our trusty glue gun why don't you see the new one on the next video it's so much better now that little tool there on the table with the pink handle is very helpful with glue guns because it gets your fingers away from the heat the first thing I'm going to put the back of the foot on to give me somewhere to work from now we want to catch in the wadding and the femo to the fur so it makes a three-way join so if one bit pulls the other two hold it in place so just hold it there don't move around too much we'll do the second one same you want to get see how that's slightly moving it is in it, the wire is in the foot but the foot's not attached to anything else so we lift that up all the way up and over hold it in place until it cools slightly pull off any extra glue and that's the back of the feet attached do the same with the back feet make him pull his trousers down and I don't mind that the paint has come off the feet because that will help it stick because it's actually attached to the femo without any paint between it so we're just going to do the same with every leg pulling off all the extra glue as we go So 
Still got one back leg to go, but as you can see now, it's given in nice trousers. So now we need to attach the fur to the front of the leg. Now I'm not going right out to the toes. I'm doing it on the top where the toes attach to the foot because I want the toes peeking out. And we do the same with the other feet. Now, now comes the hard part. This is furring the head. Now this is me totally guessing all the way along. I'm going to tell you what I did, but I'm totally guessing. First thing I did was I cut myself an ear shape. Now, I, like I said earlier, I wanted to show the inside of the ear, so I'm not putting any fur on it. But I'm going to make the fur overhang it a bit. So first of all, we're just going to hang that piece off the top. I'm just totally winging this. <laughs> There's no plan, I'm just making it up. And burning my fingers, but you get that. Making sure. So what I ended up doing is I decided to divide the cat's head into sections. And I thought, well, the smaller the sections, the more I can pretend they're flat. And, you know, like I'm only doing the ear. I'm not trying to do the whole head. I'm just doing this ear. And so I'm pretending there's a seam line where the ear is attached to the head. Of course, I pull off any bit of glue as I go along. I don't know why, I just have to. Probably because they annoy me. So I'm just putting a line of glue just on the very, very edge of the ear. And I'm getting it quite tight. See, I'm pulling that quite tight because I want it to cup around uh, um, on the back. I don't want it to shift away from the skull itself. All right, so just making sure that they're looking nice and lovely, lovely. So now we've got this little bit here and I need to pull it towards me to flatten it against the back of the edge. There's a little bit of an overhang on the material at the top, so we'll just trim that out. That looks better. So a bit more hot glue. Now we're not putting it anywhere else on the back, we're just putting it right on the edge. Because what we want to do, we want to squish it around the corner so that the fur hides where the end of the backing is. So it rounds the corner with the fur rather than the backing. And that is one fuzzy ear. And the fur is going the right way. So this is my second ear. And they're like a a vague rectangle. So the second ear is now, this is how I worked out how to do. I started with underneath the chin and I'm using the texture. I'm guessing that it's mainly symmetrical. You know, I'm hoping that when I made it, I made it symmetrical and I'm giving him quite a bib because I know that there's a V-shape under there I need to cover up. See, V-shape. So we'll just start with the bit we know and work towards what we don't know. Once his ears had fur on him, I did, he didn't need his cushion anymore. Pulling down with the pen knife. Trying to get rid of the selvage a bit. And then cutting off the bits we don't need so they're not in the way of the glue. I don't know if you've noticed, but hot glue likes to get everywhere. <laughs> Put the knife away this time. Pull off any extra fluff so that you're moving the actual backing, not the fluff. like he's got hairy eyebrows but it's not it's his ears so we're just double checking the fit now I want to have that little lip exposed 
I don't want to cover up his lip because if you look at a cat, you can see the very edge of their lip. Just making sure that's a bit neater. Yep, because that's the edge that's going to be visible. So we're just going to do a thin line of glue just below the bottom of the lip. Use our little tool so we can push right up to where the glue is and not get ourselves burned. Use it as a little foot to stamp on things. It's a bit cooler now so I can use my finger. So that's how you get the bottom lip attached. Push it in so it's nice and neat. And that's going to need a bit of glue there and a little bit there this is getting along the bottom of the throat all the way now you've got to get it all the way back to where the other piece of fur is but you want it to be the backing not the fur itself because the fur itself will let go. The backing is what you want attached. Oh, need a bit more glue there. Get these bits done first, come back to that. All the way along. So basically I'm not putting glue all over the whole thing. I'm only putting it where the edges of the backing will be. Use the wider end, push it right into the creases. This is just making sure it's going to make an under chin look nice. And then under here, now we don't want him to have a big turkey gobble, so we're going to put glue right up underneath where the head meets the neck so that the fur will stick in up there and give him an actual chin not straight into his chest he's a bit young to have his chin touching his chest you can see it's pulled it right in now we're just marking where that v-shape is Sorry about that. <laughs> Just draw a line up there, snip that off. Now I'm using a little pair of stalk scissors, just so I'm only cutting the backing. It takes longer, but I don't have piles of fluff all over my table. Smaller the, the smaller point that will cut, the less fur you're going to cut. And the whole point is only to cut the backing, not to cut the fur. And away. And now this bit. Should tuck in quite light nicely. To that little V shape there. And we will sew that in with glove stitch. Yep. Lots of smoothing going on here. So that's now been sewn. Nice and smooth. Give him a little bit of a slicker brush. Wouldn't even know it was another piece. Give the fur the ears a brush. Yes, got a brush of ears. All right, so the next thing to do is to try and fur the face. 
and with this I divided it into another three sections, a left, a right and a forehead. So this bit here is a piece big enough to do the job and what I do, it's easier to see what you're doing if you look at the back. So this piece here, I'm going for that area there, but it's actually going to be for the other side. It's just I, if I turn it the first side up, I can't mark it and I can't see. So I'll show you how we mark that out. Oh, no, I changed my mind. It's going to be the other side. <laughs> but it's the same principle. We're doing for the opposite side. So I'm marking around the eye socket and then up to where it comes into the ear. We go down a little bit and then we're marking the mouth. Snip, snip, snippity, snip. Very slowly and surely. And by now I've realised that the body of the cat is slightly too long. The neck is definitely a little bit too long and he's not quite chubby enough in the butt, but we still like him. So we're just double checking our fit here. That works fine, that works fine and that works fine. So we're going to tuck into the ear. You're not going to have a hole in the ear, but it gives us a place to lead into. And then that's the nose and mouth. So now... We cut off those little bit extras there. Now that I'm not turning that any more than what's been marked because it's not actually for the side I'm checking it on, it's for the other side. So I'm leaving myself a little bit extra there just in case I need it. But it's looking pretty good. And now we switch it over. Pick him up. And check it on the side it's going on. A lot of checking and double checking and triple checking. Because once it's stuck, it's stuck. <laughs> Incredibly hard to get off. So it looks pretty good. Looks like they are symmetrical. Go and get the... No, not yet. Nearly. <laughs> oh, we already have done it. Sorry, apologise. We are... We've already attached it on the inside of the eye and alongside the nose. We're just doing under the eye. And if you can see, I'm not putting the glue right up to the eye because it would leave a big ridge there. We're a little bit away and now we're using the little the little sculpting tool to bring it right in. And that sculpting tool is pushing the fur into the creases that have been sculpted on the face. That's it. Right up to the eye but not in the eye. Push it in with a little foot stamp. Right, so now it's attached around his eye. Now we just need to get it into the ear. We need to mark where it, where the ear finishes so that it can fit in the space. Because the ear cups around, we will need to cut out so that it will sit flat to the face.
push it in there, have a check. Looks right. And now with the hot glue to make it permanent. And as you can see, I'm rolling the fur into the glue so that it spreads along and out without laying it straight down because that makes bumps under the surface. And of course, pulling all the extra glue off. <laughs> it's always extra glue. Extra glue. And that has come out lovely. Lovely, lovely. So now we have to try and match this with where the other one finished. Smoothing on down, smooth, smooth. Now, this is the lower lip. We've got to make sure that the the backing reaches to the to the edge so that the fur can hang over the edge. So very carefully with the tiny scissors, we cut along here, trying to match it. Yep, keep checking as you cut. And there we go. So that should be almost right. Always make sure to pull anything extra off because it's hard to get once it's glued down. Down along the edge of the lip, all the way to the neck. That's it. And using my nails, I'm trying to get it to curl under so that the mouth is correct. So you can see the mouth there, but it's not it's not terribly clear. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim up any excess that's overhanging. And what we're doing, we're only cutting the backing. We're not cutting the fur because you're still going to have the backing overhanging. So if you cut the backing, you get rid of them both. Still a little bit there. Just a little bit that hasn't glued properly. Hold that in place. It gives you a nice line where the top of jaw, top of jaw, top jaw meets the lower jaw. Keep pulling the fur back the way it's supposed to go, pushing it into the creases. Now all of this can be trimmed more exactly. This is just getting the fur on. And a little bit extra there. See how it's got a flap? We just take that bit off because it's it's overhanging already adhered fur. So we don't need it. Yeah. I tried 
try to make a, a fairly good effort around the neck because we're going to be building a collar on the cat and so if the fur's not especially flat the collar won't sit flat so it's a layers upon layers of stuff all right i think that's pretty right give it a quick little slicker brush to make sure it's right And that's one side of his face done. Now we got to do the other side. <laughs> Ba-boom! There we go. Now he looks like a man with a very full moustache and beard. And hairy eyebrows. But anyway. Still a little bit there annoying me. Pretty sure that was a bit of glue. Squeaked out. Okay, give it a quick slicker, make sure it's laying flat. Now I am going to be putting resin on the eyes, the nose and the bottom lip. So I will just clear these out a little so you'll be able to see them. Just trimming it up so you can see the shapes. <laughs> Alrighty, now we just have to do the top part from the point of his nose around to the back of his head. But um, done. <laughs> I didn't show you that because it's basically the same as we did on the sides and the bottom. You just f cut yourself a piece and fit it in. Now all the way around has been stuck down and sewn down and double checked and slicker brushed. Patted him again. Can't stop patting the bud. What we're doing now is we're starting the final paintings. I have cleaned off his eyes. All I did that with was a toothpick. Um, and But look, the lip has lost some of its packing colour. So we will first of all put a base coat of white on the eyes to give something for our paint to stick to. Because glass is very smooth, some paint won't stick to it. So this one has a bit of gesso in it to give a, a, like a key or a rough surface for the rest of the paint to stick to. And the paints I'm using are a collection of paints I've had for years. They are not great. I saw I'm not sh over showing what brands they are. I mean, you can read some of them there. But they, I've literally had them for years. And like I said at the beginning, this, this kitten was made to refresh my memory on how to make art dolls. I used to make them with um, sewing machines. So this one is slightly different, but it's the same principles. So now he has a white base coat. We need to do a darker base coat to cover that green up. Just finding the same colours I used when I did the first undercoat. I actually have a paint tray now, not a piece of paper. <laughs> a piece of paper towel. I got a paint tray. So this is just covering that green up. Should have given me a little pink tongue. This is just some of the bottoms come up. That does happen until you, I mean, I could even seal the feet with the resin too. I may do that. I've done it in the video, but I may do it just because 
he's standing on them all the time, so you need to protect them. So we're now making up the colour for the two beans. Do they have little pink two beans? Trying to get a pink that I like. Mixing, mixing, mixing. <laughs> all right. So all you want is bean shapes, basically. If you don't like it, you can just wipe it off and start again. <laughs> but we've got to have the tink boat, the pink toe beans. Probably using too big a, too big a paintbrush. I'm not the world's best painter. <laughs> I'm not even the street's best painter. But you know, they're toe beans. They look cute, whatever. See on that foot I've lost a toe, but I have got a, a toenail, but I do have it and I stick it on later. <laughs> Don't worry, it does get re replaced. So this is just the second coat of the toe beans. As you can see they've dried and they're a little bit patchy, that's fine. We'll just fix them up and this is the last coat of the toe beans. Of course it would help if I was on the screen, wouldn't it? Oh, indeed it would. I'm still learning this. <laughs> I'll get better, I promise. Right, so we let him lay on his side for a while. I have put some yellow on his eyes. Um, I didn't do as much shading on his eyes as I wanted to, but that's what happens. So now we're doing the last coat on the eyes. And this is just bringing the lightness up again. And I'm trying not to scratch off my own paint. This is when I start getting impatient and I put the paint on too quickly. See, I've just taken a little bit off there. It doesn't help that it was a cold day and I'm trying to paint on glass. Okay. Trying to put a bit of dimension into the eyes because if you've ever looked in a cat's eye, it looks like it's got shape to the back of it. I mean, it's got the glossy top on the front, but there's shape to the back of it. So that's what I'm trying to do here before I put the irises on. Always remember to clean your brushes. Now, this is micaceous pigment, pearl X powder, sorry, not micaceous pigment, in copper. And I was hoping that this would show up under the resin. I just put it on with the tip and all we're doing is just trying to dab it around so that it would give a little cup of sparkle to the eyes just to give a bit of dimension and shadow to them. Alright, so now we're nearly done. 
and we're nearly at the end <laughs> we are putting the irises in no 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 we're not we're adding a little bit extra to the lip irises are next they both use black <laughs> I decided I wanted a black lip and black in the nostrils So what happens when you change your hair colour halfway through, half your makeup doesn't work. Just fixing up around the outside edge of the eyes. Some of it's glue, some of it's paint. We're just trying to make it neater. Just a little black to give him a bit of dimension, a bit of highlighting. Just covering up. I should have done galaxy eyes on him, then it wouldn't have mattered. Just putting his eyeliner on. There we go. Now, this is the resin that I'm using, and I, it can be set with a LED um, UV light, which I have one for doing nail work. This is me making sure that it's working, which it's not, because I forgot to take the paper out. I'll realise in a minute. <laughs> oh, there's something inside. Oh, what is it? Oh, look, there's a paper. Make sure it's coming through. Yes. Now, starting with the nose, put some on the nozzle. Gives a lovely effect because it stays looking wet, but it's still it's dry. It just looks wet. Put it all the way around. Make a nice shiny, shiny nose. All ready for booping. And there is my UV light, makes everything purple. And you only need a couple of minutes, a minute. I, I don't think I did it twice yet. I did it twice just to be sure that it was done. And that's the shiny nose. <laughs> and now we get a bit more. I always put the lid on. I don't know why, I know you need to set it with a... I need to set it with the light, but I always put the lid on because I don't want to lose any. A little bit on the lip. And that's just the light done for that. So we've got a shiny lip and a shiny nose. And now we are putting the iris is in. Yay. Last job. Well, second last job. Second last job. I marked them first with just a blob to make sure that they were central. And now I'm just putting the points on. So it's a, he's out in daylight, so the, the eyes are closed up a bit. Not like inside where they want food and their eye will be googly and look at me. <laughs> 
this is for the body to be outside. I slitted the eyes a bit. Mainly because I couldn't draw the, the wide open ones evenly. So we go with the thinner ones. And I love this paintbrush. It gets the handle out the way. There we go. Two little labels. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm making a very light wash with the black paint. So I put a bit in there and then I put a bit of water with it. And what I'm trying to do is I'm putting just a bit over the top edge of the eye. So when he's looking at you, it gives you a three-dimensional aspect of the overhang of his eyebrows. I was trying. <laughs> the theory is sound. The execution might be a little bit to be desired. So it's just a little light wash across the top edge of the eye. Just to put a bit of shadowing on it. Another side is a little bit light, needs to be a little bit darker. And then wash that out and put the catch lights in. With our bent bent paintbrush which is really cool so we're going to do a big one and a little one always put them on the same side of each eye and try to put them the same size as each other on both eyes. 